Hi Lunar Souls, this reading is for Cancers of any kind, anyone who identifies with or is very interested in the Cancer energy even. Maybe you are a Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, or have any other Cancer placement, or again, maybe you're just very interested in uh, Cancer energy for some reason. And the Empress card comes up for Cancer reading in... February. Do keep in mind that these readings uh, can always turn out to be timeless if you're finding them long after we've recorded, but we are recording in the month of February. Ace of Cups. Also in the reading, showing up in your past position, Cancers. And the hangman here in the future position. Okay. So I hope everyone has been making the most of the year so far. And let's uh, go right ahead and continue on with this February reading for Cancers. What is significant and crossing Cancer's path at this time? It looks like you or someone very close to you, Cancers, is asked to walk away from either you are or someone close to you is asked to walk away from what is no longer meant for you or for them to move on that's interesting because I just put um, a pick a card I think it's actually like pick a tarot deck uh, reading up um, I'll, I'll try to remember to link it below as well it's for it's like my it's like the video that I chose to put up for, um, I think for those who haven't yet subscribed to the channel when they view the channel. So, um, if you're already subscribed, you may not be able to see it, um, and maybe haven't. So I'll try to remember to link it below. Whatever you're walking away from around this time, around the, uh, the time that the uh, reading finds you, or maybe it is in February, too many cards here, but I like this top one for us, that feels like it belongs to us. But again, Cancers, whatever it is you're walking away from with the Eight of Pentacles here and your crowning thoughts uh, as what your higher mind knows when your ego is quiet. I think your higher self is wanting you to focus on work and work-related pursuits at this time. And it's egoic concerns that I think have you focused elsewhere. There's the magician surfacing for us a second time. That's going to be a piece of advice for you cancers. This is all rooted in a truth. A truth being spoken, being shared. A truth being realized and then being shared.
Um, honestly, this may be for Eight of Swords on the bottom of the deck. This may be for some Cancers who some Cancerian mothers or motherly energies who um, are wanting to work, are wanting to go back to work and are feeling some type of way about allowing themselves to do that when they have someone or maybe in other situations, something um, that needs to be nurtured. And what's coming through here is that it's actually just a, a self-limiting belief and actually an egoic concern. You're less worried that the child or whomever or whatever, um, it, it's less so the case that you're worried that whomever or whatever you're in the process of nurturing actually won't be okay without you if you focus on your your work pursuits uh, a little bit more and it's more that you're afraid of uh, maybe how that will look to others or whomever or whatever you're nurturing actually has reached a place where it will be okay. Um, the garden, the teenage children, the, um, uh, you know, or, or just older children. Um, or some business income stream even that um, was always meant to work for you on its own is, and now is ready to actually begin doing that. Whatever it is actually will be okay and actually, actually will be better off for it in the long run if you do allow yourself to focus on your own work pursuits now. Um, but some part of you is just um, always going to be a little afraid as if it were a child. And maybe for some of you, it actually is a child. Um, yeah, um, but certainly as if it were a child, it's certainly a great, a great analogy. Anyway, there's some part of you that will always be afraid that this will not stand on its own, that, you know, the chaos at large, un unforeseeable events will, will somehow um, harm this person or this thing that you feel still like you are in, in, in charge of and should be caring for. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's another reason it could just be an egoic concern. It's just the, it's just the fear that will always be there at some point you will, you will have to allow uh, this person or thing to to stand on its own in the world. I think in the near future, you you begin to embrace this. You feel ready to embrace this. I even think that you're sharing that you're ready to embrace this idea um, uh, of of uh, sort of sacrificing the 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 protection and control you sort of feel like you can exercise over something in order to allow yourself to have what you want and what you should have now which again your higher mind knows is to focus on 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 some sort of work pursuits and and it's not necessarily paying work but it, it's at least headed in that direction and i think you, you certainly see rewards for your labors in this this work that your your higher self is wanting you to focus on um and so you for for that reason and others you're ready in the near future again uh later this month likely to to yeah make that sacrifice of control and then ultimately on that path even even farther down that path you then receive back what you are able to give with that 
um, sacrifice. For one, you get this new perspective that the hangman represents. Just as refreshing as the new truth and realization was when you first realized uh, that you... Um, we're headed toward this path of nurturing something to begin with. And it's freedom. It looks like it, to me that it's freedom that you've, you've, you've given it's, it's life and it's freedom that you're giving, uh, allowing this thing, this person to really breathe and, that's what you get in return. You'll get that same space, that same freedom uh, where, you, where you're looking for it, where you need it in the more distant future. And so your advice is to, to not attempt to cut corners on this path in any way as you, as you walk this path of, uh, we'll call it sacrifice again, just to, to, as a reference here. Um, and for some of you, that really is what it feels like. Um, sacrifice of control. Don't try to say that you're you're going to sacrifice a, a, a level of control over something um, if you don't mean it. Uh, don't try to um, display to others that that's what you're doing when in secret you're actually uh, stealing uh, moments of, of, of surveillance or, or censorship or, 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 um, you know, actually finding a way to oversee that, that project or that person somehow when you're just, um, telling to others and, 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 and displaying to others, um, that that's not what you're doing, you know, don't, um, Don't try to, to deceive no one. You know, who are you really fooling in that? Um, you certainly can't fool yourself. <laughs> um, and, and with the seven of swords in reverse in the advice position, it actually looks like you will get caught anyway. So even if there is someone who you are, whose benefit um, you're lying for, ultimately, I don't think you will be able to Anyway, um, well, with the Empress card at the center of your reading cancers, you are currently presently in a state where you're feeling very much like yourself. You're feeling very abundant. You're feeling very creative. And I see that you've been open and vulnerable and willing to share in order to get to that state. And it's an energy that you want to, to bring to this work that we're talking about. And that's why your higher mind, your higher self, when your ego is quiet, knows that that's where you want to be focused. And if these advice cards aren't representing you, Cancer's, There can be a trickster around you. There could be somebody who is not as they appear, as they say they are, doing what they say they're doing. Um, and in that case, I think you're going to catch this person. You're going to catch who that is with the Seven of Swords in reverse. It seems that that's that in that case, that's who it is that uh, you need to walk away from. That is uh, then the situation that is no longer meant for you. And you're in, in this abundant, wealthy state of growth coming from truth and, and openly sharing emotion. You're just at a standstill because it's hard to let go for a lot of you. For some of you, it's, it's of someone. For others, it's just hard to let go. As I said, it could even be a business at this point that is um, ready to grow on its own or something like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person. Um, 
but it's time to just let go, focus on the work that you know you're meant to be doing, focus on, for some of you, the earning that you're meant to be doing, the, um, for some of you, the more um, tedious parts um, of, of the work that you're meant to be doing. And if it seems you don't have the will then I don't think it's that you actually don't. I think that's just um, sort of manifesting because you're still having trouble letting go of someone or something setting something, maybe even some part of yourself free when this is the moment for it. Um, and I definitely think that because of this eight of swords here on the bottom of the deck, that those self-imposed uh, limiting beliefs are what this is about. There's almost a state of shock that comes with this standstill energy in the near future um, because you're crossed with this task of, of walking away from something that is, is no longer meant for you. And, and it's, it's perhaps quite relevant in that type of situation that it could have been meant for you for a significant time. It just no longer is. And if there, if there, there is a fear in moving forward because you uh, suspect that some type of trickster or a thief is on the horizon looking to uh, in some way spoil that which you've been nurturing um, or that which you're working on or both. Um, then yes, those will, those types of energies will continue to meet you along your path and your intuition may not be wrong. That one is not far off and you will contend with this one and all of those moving forward, uh, as a part of life, like anyone else. Um, and in this instance, this person is going to get caught. But again, that might be you. And so the advice may be, you know, to not be that person getting caught if you're trying to cut corners here. If you attempt to let go of this, this, this that is no longer meant for you because you know it isn't and that you are on your way toward further growth and prosperity with two eights on the table. 88 may be particularly significant to you around this time for, for another reason. But for me, it's speaking of prosperity to us. And actually, it's 888 right here at the top, these three. So definitely speaking of prosperity, to me, 888 right above the abundance card and your card, that it belongs to you, whereas that which you're having trouble walking away from does not. But you may just enter a state of shock after you complete that task and then sort of try to backpedal and, you know, move backwards. But you're heading toward what you actually do deserve a situation where you get back the same type of nourishment that you're giving. So if someone's not providing that for you or a certain way of uh, balancing your life that, you know, ha hasn't been providing that for you, but you're, you're heading toward um, a situation where, where that is more balanced and you do get that back. And it, again, it belongs to you. It's so much better th than this situation that you've been in for you. It's so much healthier. Um, There's, there's just, you know, in, in, there's an attachment here. There's a belief that, that, that some, something won't be okay if, if a shift happens, if a change happens, if you're not there to oversee something. It's, again, a self-imposed limiting belief that you can't move forward in this way, that, that um, you 
yeah, it just makes me want to remind you again that, that, that you don't want it to be you who gets caught. So if you go through that state of shock and then try to backpedal, you know, just just be honest that you, you've changed your mind about, about uh, the boundaries that you're comfortable with uh, rather than try to pretend to yourself or to the world at large or anyone for that matter that you're going ahead with this, you know, sacrificing some level of control when when in truth you're not going to be able to see that through right now. Just at, at the very least, just be honest with yourself about that and you can start the work over. The worst thing you could do would be to lie to yourself and let yourself think that, okay, what I'm doing now, this is what it looks like when I sacrifice that control. And in no way is that actually what's happening, right? That we, we can completely not only convince others, but also ourselves that we are in fact going through with that type of thing that, um, you know, we're, we're not, um, attempting to exert our control on any particular situation and in, in uh, subtle but certain ways we are still doing so uh, you know then we've, we've got ourselves not only just as bad off as we were but also confused and openly outwardly hypocritical to boot in addition right let's get some I'm sorry about the background noise. You may have seen that the cat paws at the top of the frame. One of my beasties wants attention. So I wanted a, an extra card right here. Yeah, so this was some truth. In the, the root of this situation, there was some truth realized about um, a happy, comfortable home and or family life. Uh, so it could have been a you know, profession of love or, or uh, of some type um, because it's followed up with the Ace of Cups, this emotional openness then in, in the you know, uh, more recent past. So one one may also be particularly significant to you as this message finds you. But I think this thing, um, this truth that was realized and manifested into something emotional and, and into growth and put you in a position of not only abundance, but being a, a mother of sorts, a nurturer of sorts fairly quickly. And if it wasn't a profession of love and... Um, a, you know, a child that was delivered, then again, that's just a great analogy because it's something that needs nurtured. It's something you've watched grow. And and and, and here we see too that the, the truth, the realization that it was rooted in had very much to do with a happy, comfortable home and or family life. It had to do with um, companionship. It was either an idea about that or, or born out of that. Uh, it, it feels like for a lot of you in service of that. Nine of Swords reversed. So we said there might be a trickster, uh, there might be someone around you who is um, not exactly who they seem, cancers, and if there is someone who's trying to alleviate your fears, your worries, your doubts, assuage your uh, sleepless nights. And it seems like they're sort of phoning it in. It feels, it sounds like they're saying what they think they're supposed to say or what they think will work or um, very cliche textbook. Um, attempts to persuade you, to convince you in a direction that... Um, 
that, that, that they seem to want to, then, you know, check those micro expressions, um, pay attention to, to when their temper may, may flare, um, any moments where they seem to sort of show that they don't really mean exactly what they're saying, or they're sort of keeping something about the picture unclear, um, sort of keeping something about it from you, because, uh, yeah, we've got the nine of swords here as a, as a, an additional message on the magician card. So that could be a clue as to who that individual is. Do they have a motivation you want to ask yourself for trying to convince you or persuade you? At the same time, I think the Nine of Swords reversed here could also be telling us that, that um, anxiously looking over our shoulder, looking for enemies can create them. Um, there's not really a need to worry about this person who's doing one thing, saying one thing and doing another um, and trying to... to um, successfully put on an act because we see in this other advice card is that whoever whomever that is whether it's you or someone else trying to put on an act that is revealed we have four eights now with the eight of pentacles showing up twice this is about limiting beliefs around work your higher mind knows what needs to be done how it needs to be done and that perhaps um it's not the rung on the ladder that you'd like to be on. Perhaps for some of you, some repetitive action is required, uh, but it is where you are supposed to be. And again, when your ego is quiet and you're crowning thoughts, you know that what that work is you're supposed to be doing. So you, you, you keep your head down, you focus on that work and allow whatever you've been nurturing and growing. And maybe that's yourself. Maybe it's some other aspect of that work, but, but whatever it is, allow that to, to continue growing on its own because you know, it's ready. And if it, even if not, at the very least, you know that you deserve a situation where you're getting back, uh, as much, uh, nourishment as you're providing. And this is interesting. I think with this other version of the Eight of Pentacles, uh, we see that there may be a way to take repetitive action and actually turn it into um, an activity where each, each time you're repeating an action, you can do something a little bit differently just ever so slightly, even if it's only just to make it interesting for yourself. So we see here the artist repeating a pentacle on each paper, right? Each And each sketch is just slightly different. They're all pentacles, but the design is slightly different. And, you know, we don't know exactly why he's commissioning these sketches of pentacles, but it may just be to keep the work interesting for himself. And then look what it does to the work. It adds the style to it. So, uh, you know, we could look deeper into this with a personal reading, but in a general, I don't know specifically what um, each of you is working on. Um, and we are like over 20 minutes probably already. 
I think I just said that at 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to see the time. Um, so, yeah, but whatever it is you're working on, um, it's time to take a risk. You can do and do deserve all of those things that you're questioning. It's been a long time coming. It's been slow moving, but this has always belonged to you. And this is the type of delegation and these are the type of risks that you see successful entrepreneurs or just bosses making and taking. So we see that with the three of cups down there, there's also that there's going to be much to celebrate on the other side of uh, all of this, of this reading of this question, of these questions and these doubts. Um, but in the meantime, if yes, if there are parts of the work that you need to focus on that are seeming monotonous or repetitive to you, there may be a reason you may be meant to Add some style to it by doing each um, repetition slightly different than the one before. Okay, so Cancers, we will leave your lengthy um, February reading at that. I, I do hope that the messages were able to to connect with you, that they that they helped, and um. Yeah, thank you so much for all your support to the channel. Uh, check out information about personal readings down below in the description. Thank you for those of you who uh, donate. Thank you so much. There's a link for that as well. And I will be back with more messages for us just as soon as I can be. Bye, Cancers.